Why so little replication research? Let's go through Hammermesh's points and some others. The main thing he talks about is replication is not seen as a sort of high profile, high status activity in most professions. So this is his quote. First and most obviously, the profession puts a premium on the creativity and generality of the idea, not on verifying the breadth of its applicability. So if you come up with a new theory, a new model, new data, you find a new result, you're the hero. And then the replicator is sort of living off the dregs of that idea. That's the very negative view in, in a lot of professions. Some people say this very openly. There's some critics of the push towards replication in psychology, some very prominent scholars who basically say, uh, yeah, you know, the replicators are all kind of lowbrow and, and, and they're just uh, you know, shooting down the real scholars and things like that. And that's a terrible thing to say because if there are errors in the original work, they have to be corrected. Like, it's not enough to have a brilliant idea. If it doesn't hold in the data, it's not a real result. There's also something very democratizing and, and very egalitarian and empowering about anybody, regardless of status in the profession, being able to go and analyze data and find mistakes. You know, no one being sort of above scrutiny. It creates accountability in the profession, which is something we should think is, is good. Okay, what are some other views? Why so little? Again, we've alluded to this a number of times. A lot of these disputes become bitter. It's viewed as an attack. Why are you attacking me personally? Um, which is not a very positive way to, to go at it. It doesn't lead to you know, enlightenment. You're, you're no closer to nirvana if you get really angry with people trying to replicate your work. You're just kind of... And I think a lot of people just indulge this kind of you know, you know, combative pose on both sides. And I think either way, it's wrong. Um, you know, things should be, you know, the ideal is to approach things in a sort of scientific way. Um, of course, if you, if you feel like the person you're replicating or the person who's replicating you is being dishonest or misinterpreting things, then people start getting really upset. There's a real fear of retaliation when, when younger scholars take on senior scholars with replications. There's a real fear that somehow their papers won't get published, that if this person's an editor or referee in the future on their work, they'll kind of crush them or, or whatnot. That's, that's a, you know, I'm not sure if, maybe it's not a, it's a real fear. I'm not sure if it's a real problem. People fear it. Whether that retaliation happens, I don't know. But people are concerned about it. And that, again, stifles discussion. I've heard many times people say, yeah, you know, I looked at that data and it's re there's like, those results don't hold. Or that result isn't robust. I, I grab that person's data I've heard this from faculty. I've heard it from grad students. And they're very reluctant to publish it. They're like, what, what's the return to me going to be? I'm going like, to end up in like, a blood feud with some senior scholar for 10 years. Or I could do my own stuff and kind of make my own name in something else. So even if from the point of view of science, it would be good to shoot down a result, there's a collective action problem. You're providing a public good by shooting down flawed science. You don't get much of the return. In fact, it could be a negative for you. But if you do your own thing, you get like the returns to doing your own thing. Um, OK, why so little replication research? It's really tedious and time consuming to, to get into the head of another researcher and understand their data and understand all their analysis. It's hard enough to do your own original research where you think, of, think through how to do it and you understand your thought process. But you know, very often what, what replication authors think of as errors are just aspects that weren't well documented initially. And um, you know, very often we go back and forth with potential you know, replicating authors. A tremendous amount of time is just taken saying, oh, God, my documentation wasn't good. But no, this is why I'm doing it this way. And they go, oh, OK, that makes sense. OK, how can we promote replication? This was another interesting part of the Hammermesh article. He says, and this is like classic you know, economics response to the problem. We need more incentives for people to do replication. We should have you know, leading scholars who have credibility in the field get commissioned to write pieces. So if we think there's an issue with the paper or whatnot, and we don't want it to be one top scholar against a much less prominent scholar with all the dynamics that that provides, not that that should be discouraged. That's fine, too. It wouldn't be a bad thing to commission pieces. Maybe if there is a dispute among various scholars or there's a controversial article. What are some other ways? What, the other thing, he says, well, in general, we need more editor demand for replication. We need editors to want to publish this stuff. Because if editors are really eager to publish this stuff, they said that interest will create its own supply of replications, which is totally true. If you knew, if you wrote a really good replication, it would fly in the AR, everybody in the street, you guys would leave right now. Like mid-lecture, you'd be like off running something, right? So 
Um, but how is that going to work? I mean, editors are, optim are maximizing journal citations. That's their objective function. They want the most cited papers. If the field doesn't like replications and doesn't respect them and doesn't cite them, editors aren't going to do it. So I'll talk about next how we may need broader change in cultural norms or, or norms among researchers to get here. Payment. Just pay people to do replication. And this is what 3IE has done. So 3IE stands for the International Initiative for Impact Evaluation. They were founded about maybe eight, seven, eight years ago um, with a lot of big foundation money um, among foundations working in international development. And a couple years ago, they started a replication program. And they basically pay scholars, I think it's $5,000, $10,000, like you know, medium, small to medium amounts of money to do a replication of a, a list of prominent papers. That's basically the, the approach. Um, I think, you know, in, think, in theory, this is a good idea because it would sort of get people to do what they wouldn't do otherwise. I think what you have to ask yourself is who's going to respond to a $5,000 incentive to do a replication? I think that's the, the question kind of lurking in the background. Um, and I think uh, it, it may not motivate some of the leading scholars in, a, in the field. It's not enough money. They're going to be motivated by publication. If they were going to spend a few months working on this replication for $5,000, or a few months working on a new paper that has a chance of getting in the AER, they're going to work on the paper that may get in the AER. So there's a kind of selection that's induced here that's worth thinking through, I think, more, more carefully. The other thing, and this is the soft side, but I think very important, is in addition to the direct incentives, we have to change the perception of how this kind of research is viewed. We have to change norms and attitudes. It has to be the, the case where if someone replicates my work, I don't get pissed off. I welcome it, where editors say, hey, it's valuable to show something was confirmed. Like right now, they're only going to publish it if it contradicts a major result. In part, in terms of how to achieve this, um, maybe courses like this are part of it and sort of disseminating a different perspective on, on the scientific method and what our, fields, what our field's practice should look like. That's you know, my hope. Uh, maybe journals can, can change their practices. Um, I do feel like these changes in norms and attitudes will reinforce all of these demand side changes. You know, people will be more responsive to, the, to these incentives if they see the activity as fundamentally useful.